The following is a presentation of TFNN. We're going to go to Tom in Colorado, who has been good enough to hold. Tom, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Good morning, Steve. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Good to hear your voice. Yeah, you are Mr. Happy, I'll tell you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, Thank Steve, I, I've been listening to the station for over a few years now. Yes. And I'm a first-time caller to your show. And uh, I'll tell you, I love the way you break down the charts explain things, your patience with the callers, the way you articulate the Fibonacci's and what have you. I, I think you do a great job. You're a great addition to this uh, news network. Well, thank you very much. We really appreciate that. Really do. Yeah. I can change. Let's go to a Dave in Boston. Hey, Dave, what's happening? Hey, uh, real quick, Steve, I got to tell you, man, you saved me yesterday because I had covered my short positions when I saw that mini rally and then they tanked the market and I didn't know whether to reshort at the close. And then when I got your video update, you totally gave me a game plan and boy, did it work out. Oh, that's uh, great. Kudos, that's great. kudos, man. Uh, you were right on that. Thank and, you, uh, thank you. And even after it came out last night, they reported that uh, they had failed and then the, the futures came down. That's right. And then they went up again. So, that's man, right. you were right on that. Let's go to our first caller. Let's go to Susan in Boca Raton. Susan, thanks for calling. I just have to say one thing. I just recently subscribed to your Mastering Probabilities. Oh, thank you. You have put so much time and effort in it, and it shows. It is now time for The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the August 4th, wonderful Wednesday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I absolutely, folks, I mean absolutely treasure your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with tools that each of us need in order to lead an inspired life. Because leading an inspired life, folks, that is what it's all about. So let's go look at one of our tools. You'll love this tool. This is the tool I call the Universal Quest. You know, George Leonard, in his book, Mastery, talks about enjoying the plateau. Now, this, folks, is really important, enjoying the plateau, because so often we find ourselves racing to get ahead, thinking so much about our next achievement that we don't appreciate the time in between. If we don't stop to smell the roses, we even can, and oftentimes do, lose our motivation. And when we lose our motivation, we become unhappy. And happiness is really what it's all about. Without happiness, your potential gets blurred, and without potential, you'll take no action. And with no action, we get no results. And without results, good or bad, doesn't matter, we do nothing for our belief system. You see, happiness is not in the getting. Happiness is in the becoming. And happiness is the universal quest. Happiness is both the joy of discovering and the joy of knowing. Happiness is the result of an awareness of the full range of life's potential. It's opening ourselves to experiences, to sounds, to harmonies, to dreams, and certainly, most certainly, goals out there. Dreams and goals, folks, never stop dreaming. Happiness is the joy that comes from designing a life that practices the fine art of living well. You've got to do that. Happiness is found in having options. This is key. Options of doing what it is that we want to do instead of doing what it is that we have to do. And when I say options, I mean choices, really. If you're not happy today, write down at least three options, three choices that could make you happy. 
And for those of you that say you're not happy at this moment, the natural response is going to be something like, I can't find anything that will make me happy to do right now. And for those of you, I say this. I understand. But my question is this. If you could come up with a choice or an option that would make you happy, what would it be? What could it be if you could come up with that? Always remember, questions are are the answer. You've got to learn to ask a better question because when you do that, you will get a better answer. Don't be asking what's wrong with me or why am I not loved. Instead, focus on what's right with you and focus on all the love that you can give because when you are giving, folks, you know this, you are living. The happiness that we are searching for in the future, here's the key. It must be found right here, right now, today. Take time to enjoy that plateau because happiness, folks, that is the universal quest. And I am so happy to be here with you. So many emails last night, I hope, and yesterday. I hope that I got back to everybody, but if I didn't, if I didn't I'll cover all those questions. But let's go check out the happiness in the uh, markets if we can. Right now, as we take a look at the uh, futures here, we've got the, I've got to punch it up on my screen. We've got the uh, Dow futures off about 19 points, trading out at 15,392. S&P futures basically flat down a point and a half or a point and a quarter, trade at 1689. NASDAQ futures are up to, uh, mostly because of, uh, well, Apple is certainly uh, inspiring behind that. All of the moves uh, Carl Icahn uh, making uh, yesterday to pump that stock up. Uh, right now, you got the NASDAQ futures up two points at 31.39. Russell 2000 basically unchanged. King dollar, not a lot of movement there. Back about three ticks. Not a ton of movement here inside the uh, currency market. But we'll take a look at some of the currency stock, uh, uh, charts out there. We've got gold is flat, trading at 13.20. Silver's up 14 cents at 21.48. Light, sweet, crude, down 68 cents, down at 106, not a big deal there. Let's take a peek around the uh, globe, see what we have going on. Over in Germany, the DAX right now up 18 points, so basically flat out there. The FTSE is flat, down 79 cents, so that's unchanged. Over in Asia last night, the Nikkei was up 1 and 3 tenths percent. The Hang Seng up 1 and 2 tenths percent, and the Shanghai basically flat. It was down 6 points, down about a quarter of a percent. Our call in number, 877 Six six four eight. Give us a call. We can take a look at your stock chart. So let's start with. Uh, geez, let's start with some of the questions that uh, arose from yesterday's. And I love all those cards and letters, which means in today's technology that means email. So I do love all those cards and letters. Just keep them coming. And as we start off, you know, let's go back to one of the questions that I got. Uh, and we even covered this a little bit during the show yesterday. People said, "How is it that you were able to say the market was going to?" St- turn was going to bounce remember as we were coming in you know this show kicks off at nine o'clock so if we take a look here if you're watching us on tiger tv you're taking a look at my chart you know this is the ekg of the market this is the 30 minute chart for the s p futures as we came on board yesterday at nine o'clock the uh, futures had opened up at uh, the open candle was at 1690 during the show we saw the uh, future we saw the market push down coming into the open and coming into that time session there at 10 30 we saw the futures get down to the 1679 level that that's when I said, okay, folks, came back from the uh, break and said, what we're going to see here is we're going to see the market start to cool off. We're going to either see the market move sideways or bounce from here. That has to happen. Why? I don't know. It just has to happen because of the indicator. You know, I spent time yesterday taking a look at, I uh, got a lot of questions about the four different uh, styles of indicators that were out there. So that's good because I love making people think about that and being able, being able to provide information that's going to help you in your trading and investing. Well, you know, using, for me, the momentum indicator that I like to use is that relative strength, relative, that's all call, so call, relative weakness indicator. And when it gets into overbought or oversold conditions, the market is going to do one of two things. Can it push a little bit lower? Can it get a little bit more oversold? Sure. But it's telling you that what's on the way is either a move sideways or a bounce higher. It was nothing that was... uh There's no genius behind it. It's just simply going ahead and using a set of tools. And that's exactly what we saw out here. Now, during the show, if we take a look at that 11 o'clock hour, no reversal signal here on that bar, that little uh, doji high-wave candle. uh, just means, in fact, that's a high-wave candle versus a doji. And what that really really means, the meaning behind it from a uh, Japanese candlestick chart, means that the market has lost its way when you see a high-wave candle, similar to a uh, doji out there. And in this case here, the market lost its way. We saw it. Uh, bounce higher. Actually, 
Uh, you know, and I said, don't take a long trade. Don't take a long trade. That was during my show. I ended up taking a long trade at about 11.15, 11.17 when I got a uh, confirmation, a different time frame that I was using to uh, trade the uh, ES Mini on. I don't use necessarily the 30-minute chart. The 30-minute chart is a great EKG, but it's not what I'm using to uh, trade off of. Went ahead, placed a long trade, uh, put the exits in there, went for a nice uh, walk, came back with uh, money, uh, you know, just uh, money that had already been plucked off of the money tree out there. That's all that this market is. It's like this nice little money tree out there. What happened inside the ES Mini? Made 100% move of a move. You know, when we take a look at it, I had some emails saying, hey, how did you figure out where it was you were going to exit? Well, you know, we take a look at those Fibonacci retracement numbers. We take a look at what? 618. 382786 those are the those are the three most common numbers where we're going to see a retracement. What we really focus on is the 0.618 retracement. That number would have been 1688 out there. But Here's what we did, and here's what I did yesterday, so I can explain that to you. Let me just throw this tool on here, and this is a beautiful one because this is called Pesavento Patterns out here. Take a look at what also was occurring yesterday as the market was moving down. Now, I didn't have this pattern turned on, but had I had it turned on as the market was moving down at 1030 yesterday morning, there would have been even more conviction in my voice. Hard, kind of hard to believe there would have been more conviction. There would have been more conviction in my voice because... I think we had just been covering it either during the uh, 9 to 10 o'clock show or the 10 to 10, uh, 11 o'clock show out here. And what was that? We were taking a look at the convergence of two Fibonacci numbers coming together at the same time as the market was moving where? In the oversold condition during that 1030 session. What do we have? A 0.786 retracement and a 1.272 expansion of a set of swing points. Can it get more beautiful than that out there? So that was another indication. Now, what I was really focused on yesterday, as I had set it and forget it with regard to my uh, trade out there, with regard to a, a bounce trade in the market, was noticing that it had made that 0.786 retracement. And then I got a reversal signal, like I say, probably right around 11.15, 11.17 or so out there. And so then what I did was this. It was very simple because when a market makes a 0.618 or a 0.786 retracement, it could be setting up an A to B equals C to F. Well, if we take a look at our A point, that's going to be that swing point low at 5.30 in the morning on August the 12th out at 16.75 and a quarter. Your B point, that swing point high at 5.30 in the morning yesterday out at 16.94. Well, the C point was that retracement down as we came into that 10.30 hour. Now, take a look at the explosive move off of that C point the C to D leg. You see, I'm maintaining that exact same, the exact same angle of my C to D leg that's on that A to B leg, that old lightning bolt pattern. What did that tell me? Did that tell me that there was a likely chance that we were going to see more than a .618 retracement? We most certainly did. So where did I put my stop? I put it at the old .786 area even knowing that this could turn into a larger move up. But what else did I know about the market? What have we been taking a look at for so long? Well, we've been taking a look at for so long, and I mean so long by going all the way back into the middle of July. We've been looking at a sideways consolidation range, and resistance here is at the 1695 level. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back, folks. says you can't take it with you. TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, yesterday, I received no less than six emails asking me about the Hindenburg Omen. I couldn't believe it. You know, these emails coming from different folks. Uh, some were uh, names, uh, folks that, uh, you know, I very much uh, recognize out there. Now, what's interesting about that is I never even speak about it. I know David White at uh, one stage here many, many uh, months ago, actually, I believe he interviewed uh, the uh, gentleman that uh, created it. His name, I I'll butcher the name. I think it's Jim McCoy back in the uh, 1990s. So I sent off some emails. I didn't get it to everybody. But uh, yesterday, in essence, uh, made it uh, eight. I believe it's eight during the last ten weeks. Eight Hindenburg Omen sig uh, signals during the last eight weeks. And as I said, it was created back in the 1990s. Uh, Jim, I'll spell his name for you, M-I-E-K-K-A. -M -E you can go do the uh, research on it. And the name for the actual uh, uh, Hindenburg Omen came from uh, Kennedy uh, Gamage out there. He wrote a, uh, a newsletter called the Richland uh, uh, report and uh this basically is, and what I've got on my screen, if you're watching us on Tiger TV by chance, because this is really the uh, key to it, if you're watching on Tiger TV, here's a chart of the S&P 500, and all the black arrows on there are all the different times, uh, going back to 1986, 84, 85, 86 time frame, each of the different times when the uh, Hindenburg Omen showed up, which is nothing more than taking a look at some variation of uh, new highs to new lows. There are different folks that have got different 
different methods for doing it out there, and uh, it doesn't really matter. The point is that because you read about it a lot and it sounds, oh, my goodness, you know, like the world's going to fall apart. Remember, it's just an omen. An omen is, is uh, it's, it's not called the Hindenburg signal. You know, yesterday I got a signal to go along and to take a uh, counter-trend bounce in the marketplace out there. That was a signal that you could trade off. If you can't trade off of, well, I haven't been able to find a way to trade off of an omen out here. And this chart here really proves it. David probably showed something like this as well. You know, so we've had eight in the last ten weeks. Does it mean something? Yeah, it probably has some meaning out there. But can you actually just trade off it? No, because if you take a look at all of the events that have taken place, you know, over the last, uh, what, uh, 30 years, the time frame, you know, sometimes it leads to a, a significant correction. Can we say that that was it? Or are there better tools out there that identify some other form of divergence that, that work just as well? Maybe even better, in fact, even so much better that some of those are actually signals in the uh, marketplace. So uh, here's a chart. It's got a, a ton of these uh, Hindenburg Omen signals in there, and oftentimes they lead to nothing more. That, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have used the word signals. The Hindenburg Omen marked on the chart, and oftentimes they lead to absolutely, positively nothing. So can you use this at all for your trading? I can't, but maybe you can come up with a way to do it. Instead, I'd look for other patterns out there, A, B equals CD, reversal signals from bearish candles, uh, different other types of uh, divergence that you can actually trade off of. Well, one of those things that we can take a look at here is the Euro-Japanese yen. As we take a look at this, this is a 120-minute chart. We showed this yesterday. We did get that bearish reversal signal at the .618 retracement. A little bit of follow through, and then overnight the market just simply moves sideways. Now, why is that important? Well, because as that signal was actually being formed, the market on the currency chart, on the Euro Japanese yen, on the 120 minute chart, got where? Got into the overbought condition. So you got into overbought. That meant it had to either move sideways or pull back. That bearish reversal signal that came in during the time frame of 9 a.m. and then a little bit of follow through through the 11 o'clock session out there. Uh, folks, that was a, a signal that this should really pull back. And pull back to where? Well, look, it should at least pull back to the point three eight two retracement level. I mean, that is a dead cat. That is, that's normal. That is such normal behavior. And what we have seen thus far is not even a move all the way back down there. Back down there would be the price point of 129.50. The low actually came in during the session when we were on the air yesterday at 129.70. So what does that mean? Well, if it can't back off to the dead cat bounce area, to the .382 retracement, and all that it's doing is moving sideways, what's it doing? It's working off an overbought condition. Overbought to do what? Overbought to move higher, most likely. And when it moves higher, where's the next level? You got it. 0.786. That 0.786 retracement level will take it up to about 131.08. What will that do? Well, that'll be the little rocket fuel, a little jet engine fuel to uh, allow these markets here to actually bounce or move a bit higher out there. Now, when I say bounce or move higher, do the bulls have control of the market? No, not according to what I utilize to determine who's got control of the market, and that's the New York Stock Exchange. New York Stock Exchange, in order for the bulls to take control today, they're going to need net advancing issues of something like 1780 And really, they'll need a little bit more conviction behind the move than that. But this currency pair, the Euro-Japanese Yen... It's not backing off, not backing off like the bears would like it to back off. That says we could be looking at higher prices in the euro yen as well as our markets. 877-927-6648. Be right back, folks. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors.
With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. With over three decades of commodity trading experience, Andy Hecht has developed a system that combines both technicals and fundamentals. He calls this approach Technomental, and now you can put it to work for yourself with his brand new service, the Technomental Commodity Report. In this weekly newsletter, which comes out each Thursday morning, Andy gives you his analysis of the market price direction bias using fundamentals and then specific trade recommendations including entry and exit points using technicals. The recommendations in the newsletter are always based on stocks and ETFs, so a futures account is not required, and Andy will often use options in the recommendations as well. Andy will tell you where to get in, where to get out, and he'll outline the risk-reward profile for all recommendations. To get your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht while locking in the low introductory rate, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. to the races we got the dow off 14 points trained down at 15 434 s&p slightly green up 80 cents at 16.95 composite uh, down 32 pennies at 36.84 russell 2000 up two cents so we've got a, a flat we've got a flat barefoot water skiing market going right now it's not flat over in apple land we got apple up by about 10 bucks trade out at 499 close to 500 google's off uh, three trade at 878 apple is leading the charge right behind Behind it is Steinway Music. I believe a uh, buyout there going on. That's up a nice 5%. Uh, Jinko Solar Holdings, JKS, that's up 11% this morning. That's only up a buck 56, though. Wage Works, W A G E, up 4%. Uh, Mankind Corp, M N K D, that's up 16% this morning. That being up a dollar. To the downside, getting crushed this morning is Cree, C R E E, is the ticker symbol, off 14 bucks and change, down nearly 20%. X1, off 11%. 3D uh, software. Software uh, maker out there. We'll check out uh, that chart as uh, as well as Cree Silver Spring and Networks. That's off twenty four percent. SSNI SeaWorld Entertainment. 
down 7% out there. Uh, Google, as I mentioned, off about a couple of bucks here. Millennia Media, Double M, that's off 22%, but it's down a buck 88. Again, our call number 877-927-6648. Let's start taking a look at some of these stocks here that are falling apart. Let's go see where they're trading into. The first one we'll start with is Cree. C-R-E-E is a ticker symbol. Let's go see what kind of volume we've got. Ooh, this is volume off of the top. This does not look good, folks. So yesterday, we spent some time just taking a look at a blank chart because of the emails of, you know, receiving from uh, from individuals, listeners. Thank you so much for listening. We do appreciate that. Just saying, you know, I'm, I'm new to technical analysis. You make it sound so exciting. I want to see what it is that you see in the stock chart. Where do I start? And of course, what we did was we just took out a blank chart. Well, we could consider Cree to be a blank chart as well. In fact, we'll just make it a blank chart out here. That'll make it easier. Remember the very first thing that I do when I take a look at a stock chart is see what's going on today. Nothing like being present wherever you are. Well, right now, if we can take a look at what it's doing, what we do see here is that Cree made a high yesterday. In fact, I'll just put this on a monthly chart real quickly here. And as it was making a high, it wasn't an all-time high. It was getting back to the highs back here in April of 2010. Just to throw that in let's just go now go take a look at but it still was making a significant high yesterday doing it with volume of four and a half million shares really not too bad because prior to today's volume that's how you want to see a high being made you know the prior session was two million shares the prior session before that 1.8 million shares out there had some uh, decent uh, well i won't say it had a little bit of decent volume on august 1st with 2.6 million shares but this thing it fell out of bed this morning already gapping down volume off of the highs that's not the uh, first move that we will likely see inside Cree as it gaps as, as long as I'm assuming this gap is going to hold here today because it's a pretty wide gap. So far the high is 62.34. The low of yesterday was 73.75 so you got a nice little 10 plus dollar gap out there. And this is volume off of the highs. 3.4 million shares already. That is institutional selling. And you don't like to see institutional when you're long a stock. You don't like to see institutional selling. You don't like to see because it's not the first sign. Now, remember, what happens here when you get that first sign of selling is the stock will bounce back, maybe fill the gap somewhere inside the uh, gap before the next sign of institutional selling occurs out here. Now, is the damage that bad? Where is it falling back to? Well, here's the thing that you've got to really be it's the first place that your eyes should, second place that your eyes should go when you take a look at a stock chart. After you take a look at the day's action, then where are those high volume bars? In this case here, they stick out. They stick out on every single chart that's out there. In the case of Cree, it got, takes you back to March 5th. Uh, 13.2 million shares. The high is 52.35. The low is 47.75. It's the high or the low that is going to act as a potential support level. If that fails, where's the next high volume bar? Well, that next high volume bar would take you all the way back to January. January 23rd at the 38 to 41. Is that where price is going? I don't know. I just know that right now what we can see here today is markdown has begun inside Cree, C-R-E-E, out there. And it did fall all the way back to the last time that it had volume. And that was on this uh, trading session here of June 28th. You know, June 24th is key for us in the markets because we've got the Dow, we've got the Diamonds. They've got volume right down at June 24th. So we know that that's going to be an area that in, if and when, let's just say that that Hindenburg Omen, as well as many other signals, that are out there uh, start to come to fruition. Where is it that price will go? Well, where price will go to is a high volume bar. The most current one inside the Dow Diamonds, that's going to be June 24th. In the case of Cree, the most current one was the uh, period of uh, the day of June 28th. The high was 61, uh, 64.17. The low was 61.62. You're trading at 62.60. So it moved right to where it should. The problem is it's coming in there into that area with volume, and that's what sets up these other concerns concerns here, these other high volume bars well further down, another $10 down. That's not the kind of haircut that you want to take. This is not good positive action on a stock like Cree. Let's go take a look at X1, XONE. Let's go see what's going on there because that's 11% move to the downside today. Uh, so X1, uh, and it, oh, not an island reversal. Looks like it was really close out there. So at least X1 does not have the most bearish of uh, signals. It did gap down this morning. So far, volume on this 427,000 shares. Again, same thing. Have your eyes go over to the left on the chart. Where do you see volume? Well, move down this morning right into that volume bar, which was July 16th. The low of that has not been tested. As long as this closes below 65.95, it's at 67.47. If it does close, 
in that 65.95, you'll see a test of 55.50 inside X1 out there. So we're starting to see a little bit of selling inside of this equity. Uh, Let's see what else we have. Silver Spring Network, SSNI is the uh, ticker symbol. That's down 22% this morning, SS, <coughs> excuse me, NI. Now, that's an island. Holy cow. Look at that. Uh, this is a uh, IPO. Uh, looks like it goes all the way back to March 13th. You shouldn't be having island reversals on a uh, stock that's owned. Let's see what in the heck these guys actually do out here and see if I can find any news on this. So here is what looks like. Let me refresh my screen to make sure I've got all of the uh, data. So Silver Spring Networks, I don't see the news on it, but let's take a look at what it is that they actually do. They provide networking platform and solutions that enable utilities to transform the power grid infrastructure uh, into the smart Smart grid out here. Well, they're getting smarted on this morning as this thing here has gapped down yesterday. This closed out at uh, 3169. Take a look at this little island that it uh, created out here. This is the most bearish of reversal patterns that exist in the marketplace when you leave all of these shareholders out here stranded. Now, when I say all of these, in this case here, it's not that big of a, a deal. You know, what I mean by that is the uh, liquidity in this, you know, is basically somewhat non existent. Yesterday, they did 76,000 shares on a stock that's trading at uh, 30 bucks out here so it's not exactly a highly liquid stock out here but nonetheless it's got an island reversal what does that set up it sets up coming all the way back to the ipo date of march 13th the top of that is 2249 did it actually hit that no, it hasn't hit that here yet, but that 2249 high, uh, low of 2064, that could very likely be the uh, target inside SSNI. A uh, little bit of damage being done because this morning here already down with 243,000 shares. Again, yesterday it made a uh, move with 76,000. Up at the highs here on the August 5th uh, session, 202,000 shares, 669 at least on August 2nd when it gapped up. But it is now gapped down below that level, and it's got volume into this thing so that does not look very positive at all let's go take a look at apple see what apple is doing you know we have been taking a look at apple as one of our core charts we know that apple had that confirmed a to b equals cd up so you can see here that uh, t uh, charting uh, is the most fundamental of uh, tools that you possibly can use because obviously carl icon has been building a, a stake with inside of apple and we we didn't know who was doing what but what we did see here was we saw apple gap up above a b point of an a to b equals cd uh, this b point was the uh, swing from july 18th 434.87. The uh, retracement was a four-day retracement, a very shallow retracement, less than 0.382. What does that mean? That means you're going to see more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. Uh, we had some callers uh, call in on Apple. They were long Apple. What should I do? Uh, and just simply said, well, look, this looks like this wants to at least make the 1 to 1.272 move out here. We knew it would find some resistance up at the uh, 200 period, 200 day in this case, because we're looking at a daily chart, 200 day exponential moving average. But nonetheless, it wanted to move up and most likely go ahead and to uh, complete the filling of this gap, this breakdown session that took place on January 23rd, January 24th. That's the low of the January 23rd candle which is 50477 that it looks like it wants to uh, go to i still believe it wants to get up there it's traded at 49856 right now it has not completed that fill we'll have to see what the kind of what kind of volume comes in because the breakdown here was with 52 million uh, shares we can see apple has absolutely gotten into the extreme overbought uh, condition yesterday though completing the 1 to 1.618 8 to b equal cd but doing it with conviction what i mean by that is a wide ranging bar coming into that area with volume out there and says that, uh, you know, let, let, let's just go complete the gap. Now, where's support inside Apple? Well, you could say it's really at two different spots. It's going to be at the low of yesterday, just simply because of the volume. And now we may find support at that 200 period exponential moving average. Right now, that happens to be the low of yesterday, or very close to it. The low is 468.57. The low from yesterday was 468.05 out there. So that is on Apple. But you can see ahead of time, before Uncle Carl sent out his uh, tweets or whatever it was that he did yesterday, Yesterday, inside the marketplace, the chart itself was already giving an indication of the move that was going to be behind it. Didn't know why, just knew that based on the uh, using A to B equals C to using the lightning bolt, using retracement Fibonacci, uh, using the whole kit and caboodle, told us where Apple was uh, headed to. Uh, let's go check out uh, what's going on inside the. Uh, oh, we had a. Uh, uh, 
got an email to take a look at the uh, Great British Pound and was the Great British Pound Japanese Yen currency pair out here. So we're going to take a look at that. That's what we've got on my screen here right now on the daily chart. Now the Japanese Yen, uh, Great British Pound Japanese Yen uh, currency pair, that's the cross pair we're looking at. It's trade at 152.48 out here. Uh, last time that it saw its 200 period exponential moving average had a little bit of a, uh, let's uh, come back here. We had nice, when you see these four moving averages converge together out here, you really want to pay attention attention to it because you want to see which way they separate. Lagging indicators uh, for sure, but we saw a convergence of this area back in October, or this uh, uh, currency pair saw a convergence of this area back in October of 2012. And the four that we're looking at are 8-day, 21-day, 50, and the uh, 200, all exponential moving averages. And what we can see here is once they finally started to blow apart here, and I mean blow apart to the upside, they got in order. The lagging indicator was saying this is also can be used as a momentum. I like to use this from a momentum standpoint to understand what kind of momentum is inside the uh, equity that you're looking at, the stock chart that you're looking at with regard to the time frame. Well, inside the uh, Great British Pound Japanese Yen, what it has been doing, what's the other pattern that you actually see that's been taking place out here for a period of a, a couple of weeks? Yes, exactly right. You got that. This thing has been consolidating. So if we take a look at that consolidation zone, it looks just like this, a consolidation from probably about the high of about 153.81 down to a uh, low of 147.58. Now, I don't know if the uh, listener who sent the email was actually in a trade here, but much like we're taking a look at our ES Mini, the 120-minute chart that's been in a 23-point consolidation range, uh, one of the ways to really play this as we take a look at this pattern here is to uh, wait for it to break either the upside or to the downside or if you want to go ahead and take a short trade wait till it gets up to the top of the range you want to take a long trade wait till it gets down to the uh, bottom of the uh, range out there but right now all that this is doing is consolidating high is consolidating Consolidation moves, they usually resolve themselves in the direction that they came from. I would say the larger direction that this is coming from is where? From the lows, this looks like this may want to, in fact, move higher out there. And they'll move higher based on that. The minimum move should be that consolidation range. So what you can do here on a uh, stock chart, and everybody's uh, system has the ability to draw usually at least boxes or, or uh, what have you, lines that you can actually measure. And uh, so consolidations are a great tool, great way to be able to do that. If we take a look at that, it's either going to move up into about the uh, uh, one when it does, if it does break, when it does break around the 160 uh, level, or it will actually move down to where it'll move down and it will penetrate that uh, 200 period at 200 day because we're looking at a daily chart exponential moving average. So this is going to be interesting because if it were to break lower, it would be the first time going all the way back into the uh, area of uh, since we had that convergence of these four moving averages back in October of 2000. 12, that it would have broken the 200 period exponential moving average. So I suspect that what we'll see is this will resolve itself to the upside. But if it does come to the downside, what you want to be paying attention to is, is the uh, change in trend here over. And usually, using that uh, 200 period exponential moving average is one way to take a uh, look at that. So that was on the Great British Pound Japanese Yen. Let's go back and uh, check out the markets. Let's go see what we've got going on here right now. The Dow is uh, off uh, 40 points. S&P basically flat. That is down a uh, point. Now, I mentioned that uh, sideways, a 23-point uh, move inside the S&P 500, and that's what's really baking out here. If we go ahead and we take a look at that stock chart, you can see here's that, uh, here's that range. So uh, one way or another, we're going to see a 20, in my opinion, when we see a break, we're going to see a break of about 23 points, either to the upside or to the downside. No idea just yet which direction it is going to uh, take out there. Uh, now, if we do see a break to the upside, 1704 is an area that the ES Mini has to clear. If it clears that with conviction, the 23-point move will absolutely be to the upside. 877-927-6648. Be right back, folks. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain 
business and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. That was off 49 uh, points right now. s and still down a couple of points here. And uh, Simon Property Group, one of the stocks that uh, we're looking at right now on my uh, screen. Uh, ticker symbol SPG, trouble in paradise out here. Uh, this thing had made a, a real nice run. You know, we've been following this on a longer-term time frame. We're looking at it on the uh, weekly chart here. And uh, notice that coming off of the uh, 2009 lows, uh, this stock here has broken its uh, trend. And uh, it's about to uh, move below the uh, most recent swing point, which is that June 24th uh, level, 152.02. So broken a, a trend out here, not a, a good sign. If we take a look at the uh, daily chart out here, uh, it's attempting to uh, cross a, a B point. Now, so far, not with volume, but early in the trading session, only 30 minutes gone by. June 24th, the low out there. 
uh, is a one fifty two oh two. Mention that because we look, took a look at that on the weekly chart. Two point eight million shares. If this thing can get below, if this does get below one fifty two oh two on more than two point eight million shares, it will go ahead and uh, firm up. And A to B equals CD down, and it'll be a, a doozy. Doesn't mean that it'll do it overnight. If we take a look at what that pattern could look like, and you know this chart here also has those four exponential moving averages up there, and things are lining up right now. Uh, you've got the uh, fifty and the uh, fifty is about to cross through the uh, 200. Now, it has not exactly. The 50-day is at, uh, let's see here, 161.77. 161.41 is the uh, 200 period. Of course, you get that cross, that's referred to as what? That's right. That's referred to as the death cross out there. So Simon Property Group, very close to that occurring, as well as all four of those uh, lagging indicator moving averages out there setting up to be in uh, move uh, in a uh, momentum trade to the downside. Now, if in fact that uh, June 24th low gets taken out with volume, the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD down inside Simon Property Group would take you to 136.59 out there. Not really too bad considering this had a, a nice run up most recently from the lows in 2009 from 25 bucks out there so uh you know still not too too shabby out here but that's the pattern uh, that uh, is setting up at the moment uh, well it's setting up it has not occurred uh, it's a matter of what it does with it when it gets down to these uh, lows here it should test 152.02 now we can also see that it is moving down into the oversold condition so it is likely that what we first see down here the first move is that it gets down test 152.02 holds that area moves sideways to get rid of some of that oversold condition to then go ahead and really take on that uh, swing point low out there. That is in Simon Property Group. Let's take a look at the... Uh Let's take a look at uh, the uh, commodity sector a bit. Let's go see what Goldilocks is uh, doing right now. Gold is trading at one at thirteen twenty-five uh, ninety. It's up five bucks. Uh, yesterday's pullback was on uh, about one hundred forty-one thousand uh, contracts uh, versus moving up with ninety-six thousand the prior day out there. But the pullback here is still really just an inside day out there. So pulling back with a little bit of volume, but not a huge deal out here inside uh, gold. Silver, on the other hand silver boy that thing has taken off to the uh, races it completed the one to one a to b equals cd yesterday just had a little bit of a pause ca uh, candle out there 2214 is next on its horizon 2297 uh, that'll be your one to 1 1.618 a to b equals cd that too also on the horizon and that is for high ho silver light sweet crude the uh, pullbacks that we've seen in light sweet crude have been very shallow nothing more than a 0 0.382 retracement off of its last swing point low to high out here. Uh, this thing has been consolidating sideways. Of course, it consolidated for a full year, which has given us an indication that 114 is in range of where it wants to travel to. Bonds here, before we go to the uh, close here, bonds trading lower. They want to test the uh, swing point low from August the uh, 2nd. Folks, thanks so much for being here. It is Wonderful Wednesday, and I want you to have a, a wonderful day. And always remember, you have an amazing power within yourself. And that power, it's so strong, folks. It'll allow you to do anything you want in life. Have a great Wednesday, folks. Look forward to seeing you soon. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past.